Hustle. Follow the Hustle. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Reezy Resells. On my channel, I teach people how to make a living outside of a regular nine to five, how to be a reseller, how to make money selling other people's junk, selling your granddad's clothes. But for the most part, I sell used books. This is a bushel cart full of books we're gonna send to Amazon. And these are Gaylords that are full of books for us to go through to sell on Amazon. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about and show you guys how I sell books that I can't make any money selling to another company called Sell Back Your Book. My good friend Bill Martlink works at Sell Back Your Book and he used to be a bookseller himself. He was actually one of the first original 20 Amazon FBA booksellers and there's a lot of crazy stories about that. I will put a link up here wherever it's at. You guys can watch that video where me and him did a live show and we talked about that. But today I'm going to be sending this Gaylord of Books and that one which is up there we have it marked sell back your books and then this one also these ones that are stacked much nicer are for someone else we're actually selling these to bookstores but these are all books that bill doesn't want at sell back your book and we also can't make money off of them but these ones bill does want so he's giving us anywhere from five cents to 50 cents for most of these books and we have two gaylords and he is going to pick it up today the way it works for us is we do our normal processing we dump the gaylords of books onto the sorting table over here. We take what we can sell FBA, we take what we can sell merchant fulfilled, and we list it up here on these shelves. And the stuff that we can't make any money on, we scan through our buyback system, which tells us if there's any other companies or websites that want to buy them from us. And then we sort those out to go to the respective places or websites of which sellbackyourbook.com is one of them. The best thing about Sell Back Your Book is that they will take Gaylords of Books, which is so much more efficient for us. We don't have to box it up into 50 pound boxes and ship them off with UPS or FedEx. We actually just fill a Gaylord or two preferably and then we finish our shipment with them and they send a truck to pick it up very, very quickly. The truck is going to be here sometime today and before the truck gets here in the next couple hours, I got to get these two Gaylords outside, get them wrapped to the pallet, put the stickers on them on the side and then when the truck comes, turn on the forklift and load them into the truck an example of the kind of stuff that's in here. Lots of good books. Dork Diaries, who likes Dork Diaries? All your kids read Dork Diaries. Stephen King, Al Capone Does My Shirts, that's a Newbery Honor Medal winner. Island of the Blue Dolphins, this is another medal winner book, Newbery Gold Medal. I see some James Patterson over there. Sue Monk, Do Yourself a Favor, Forgive. We got lots of books in here, all kinds of books that people like to read. This is a very popular book. It's another very popular book. So as you can see, these books are far from being trash. And as someone who is an avid reader, themselves. Books actually changed my life, not just because I make a living selling them, but because it's how I educated myself and was able to excel in life, gain a hunger for knowledge and for self-improvement and for bettering myself. So it actually hurts my soul to throw books away. So I'm very happy to see these going somewhere to someone that can use them and not ending up in a landfill. We actually, 90% of the books that we buy in bulk, we end up not being able to monetize in any way. And so we give them for free to a recycling company that takes them and does a myriad of things with them. But I don't know exactly what they do with the ones they can't use. And so I'm assuming some of them still make it to the landfill. We do our best. Unfortunately, we can't save all of the books, but these ones are being saved along with these ones. Yo, Avery, hit me up. I got some books for you. Here is the bill of lading. I got to give one of these to the driver and then one of these are going to go to me. These are the labels that go on the pallets, two per pallet. I'll go into how we process buyback books in depth in another video, but this is the room that we have dedicated to processing books for buyback. We're essentially saving nickels, dimes, and quarters from the trash in this room. Check it out. We do about two grand a month off of buyback. So for us, it's important enough to have a dedicated workstation and area. All of these books in in here are books that have yet to be scanned and ran through the buyback system. Over here is our little productivity chart, which is kind of meager right now, but you can see our goal is 500 per week. We just started doing productivity chart and it actually helps out a lot. But as you can see, we have a lot of books to scan. This was a whole shelf full all the way to the sky, but we actually took these apart because we're using them for workstations for our new FBA workflow. Sadly, as many of you guys know, books are not essential. And so there's no point 
for us to process books right now because we can't send them off to FBA. So taking care of this stuff right now is actually pretty cool. And we actually kind of switching our system. We're building shelves and listing stuff merchant fulfilled so that we can get more items out that way. If you aren't aware, FBA is now taking 30 plus days for items to arrive to customers. So we're actually selling more books than ever, over 1200 books in the last five days, but they're not shipping to customers. They are still pending, which means customers can cancel them and we're not getting paid for them yet. So crazy, crazy times. But in order to get around that, we're listing books merchant fulfilled and shipping them to customers direct ourselves. And we can get an order today. We can ship it today, get paid today, and it can arrive to the customer in two, three days, something like that. So we're doing our best to stay in business. But as you can see, there's nobody here. Today is a Wednesday. Normally I would have team members here working, but we had to do a temporary layoff during the current crisis. We can't afford to pay people to work when we can't even get any more books from our suppliers. So these 20 Gaylords of books that we have here unprocessed, this is all that we have left. And I could do these in about four days myself. So it doesn't make any sense to have people here working. We're not in a hurry to process these. I'm going to climb up here real quick and show you guys what some of the raw Gaylords of books look like. Let me climb up here. So these are unprocessed Gaylords of books. Those are actually, that's the sell back your books, the second one. And you can see this is in danger of breaking. I'm gonna have to wrap this. I'm gonna take pallet wrap and I'm gonna roll it into a string and tie it around there in probably two places and give it a little bandana of pallet wrap string to kind of hold it together. I won't be able to wrap it in this position, but then hopefully it doesn't fall apart because that'll create a big mess. But these Gaylords are unprocessed. You can see right over here, there's a boot in that one. We do get some trash in different bins and not all of it is very good. Here's a bunch of golden books. These will sell. We can lot these up and sell them on eBay. Rick Riordan, Mini Weapons of Mass Destruction 2. These books are actually really cool. I might take this home to give Luna something to do during the lockdown. We do occasionally get some DVDs and stuff mixed in. We get some books like this, stuff like this. Not everything is going to make us money. That's why it's important to go through everything and scan it to find what's worth money. All right, enough talking. I got to figure out how I'm going to get these outside. I'm going to have to move stuff so I can move stuff. Downside of having a rectangular warehouse that's only 2,000 square feet, we don't have a ton of space. First thing I'm going to do is pallet jack this pallet out of the way. Jack that pallet, which is actually going to sell back your book. Both of these are going to go to the front of the room where we have more room. Then I guess I'm going to have to move this one also so that I can get to that one up there, which is going to require the forklift. So time to move stuff. <laughs> Now comes the double stack. I'm about 30% worried that that thing is gonna rip when I pull it out. And I have two options. I could use the forklift or I could just pallet jack it out. I think I'm gonna try and just use the pallet jack just cause like I said, our warehouse is long and rectangular and anytime we have to bring the forklift back in here, it's just not always a good situation, so. Sometimes the wheels can get stuck on the pallet jack wheels, so I'm gonna check that out. It looks to be good. We might just be stuck on a little speck. Here we go. get that pallet off the top. Those three pallets are bookstore books that I'm gonna be sending to my boy Avery on the East Coast as soon as things get back to normal. So we're actually gonna hold those long term. But this Gaylord of Books is going to bill at sellbackyourbook.com as well as the one that the phone is being stacked on right now. So let me get the forklift and get that thing down. All right, 
So we now have the two Gaylords of Books for Bill at sellbackyourbook.com outside of the warehouse. Now I'm gonna wrap them and get them ready to be picked up. I'm actually not sure if I have to pallet wrap them, but just out of courtesy, I am gonna wrap this one to try and prevent this from becoming a mess for Bill or one of his drivers. That's just it's common courtesy. You gotta make the job easy for people. Kinda made it difficult on myself by putting them so close to each other. So I'm gonna grab the forklift and separate these by about four to five feet so that I can get around them with the stretch wrap. This is a stretch wrap. It's just like saran wrap. It's called pallet wrap in the pallet wrapping business. I guess that's what you call it. You can get it at Costco, you can get it at Uline, you can even get it at Staples, I believe, in different places. But it can be pretty expensive if you get it locally, so I recommend getting it online. I'll try and put some links down in the description for some good deals on pallet wrap. Let me move these real quick, and then I'll do a cool time lapse of me wrapping the pallet. And I'll also explain to you guys how you're supposed to wrap a pallet. Much, much better. Even pallets need social distancing. All right, I'm gonna give you the lowdown on how to pallet wrap a pallet before I actually start wrapping these pallets. You wanna pull out some pallet wrap, make it into a little rope and tie it onto the pallet. Then you wanna wrap the actual bottom of the pallet and you need to wrap the items that are on the pallet so that they stay to the pallet. The goal is to secure it to the pallet, okay? And we're gonna do three passes one way, top to bottom, and then we're gonna do three passes the other way, top to bottom. So there's gonna be six total layers of pallet wrap on this pallet and Bill has also requested that we wrap the tops of the pallet to keep them dry so this is gonna be a nice little time lapse of me wrapping these two pallets so you see I pulled some stretch wrap off made it into a little rope and now I'm gonna tie it to itself and that is what's gonna hold the pallet while I go ahead and wrap it around Bad news guys, I wrapped the pallet and I got it done and I was filming a sweet time lapse for you, but my iPhone glitched out. I don't know if you guys are aware, but iPhone, iOS, whatever, the time lapse function glitches out a lot. Apple doesn't seem to care. Comment down below if you've experienced time lapse glitch on your iPhone. So what happens is film a sweet time lapse, super sweet. And then when you get done, you go to watch it. It just says loading, loading, loading forever. Then it'll have the circle with the eye in it and it'll say unable to play video. I don't really know what causes it it's kind of hit or miss yes i wrapped it but i don't have the time lapse i'll try and film another time lapse with this one and i'll use the hyperlapse app because i can trust that a little bit more than the ios time lapse let me show you guys this up close so i got it fully wrapped i started down there tied it up went around three times both ways and i got the top done the top is the trickiest guys you got to go around the corner and then take it up over the edge look right here it came up here and then i went across but the good news is we are closed tight. This one actually had two flaps, so that was pretty helpful. The other flaps, I think, are inside, so next time I gotta remember, since Bill wants these covered on the top, that we will get the flaps all the way outside before we start filling it. That way they can be on the top when we shut her up. And now it's time to do this one, so let's get this one done. My God, I am so dizzy right now. Did you guys get dizzy watching me? I think I feel like I'm gonna throw up. But these two are now wrapped, ready to be picked up. So next, I gotta get the pallet labels, put them on the pallet, and then it's just a waiting game, waiting for the truck to get here. So here's the pallet labels. Let's grab these and go put these on the pallet. When you label the pallets, you get two for each pallet and you wanna put them on opposite side, near the top center of the pallet on the outside of the pallet wrap. Boom, pallet label one, pallet label two, pallet label three, and last pallet label four, we got them. Now I'm just waiting for a truck. Right now it's 2.57 and they were supposed to be here between noon to four, so I'm hoping they show up on time. Still gotta make it to the post office too. Oh, you can't fade these skills. Y'all saw that. That was a long distance tray, but look at all this empty space we have right here now. That's amazing. 
All right, I just called the freight company and it looks like they are gonna be here sometime within the next hour. It was dispatched to the driver about an hour ago. So they could be pulling up any moment, but while I'm waiting, I'm gonna keep busy. I have three merchant fulfilled orders for books that I haven't pulled, wrapped and put postage on. So if you are ready already for today, but these three are not, I thought that truck was gonna be my truck, it's not. Anyways, I'm gonna go upstairs to our merchant fulfilled section and grab these three books. These numbers are in the skew of the books and it's also how we keep them ordered on the shelf so the book with the SKU sequence 514 543 and 558 are now gonna get pulled and then I'm gonna wrap them and print postage while we wait for the truck guy to show up let's go do that made a huge mess here uh, while I was waiting all right upstairs upstairs Oh God, sorry. It's a mess up here, guys. It's chaos. These are books we need to list. These are also books we need to list. Things are super chaos right now and I'm trying to do everything myself. So here's the books. You can see we actually just handwrite the ticket numbers because we didn't have an extra printer to use up here and I'm lo-fi, low-tech, it works. Here's what they look like when you do print them. We were using a printer at first, but we needed to commandeer it for downstairs operation. So it's easier with this, but you know, we just pull a bunch of paper write some numbers on them and slip them in the books when you're listing them it works just the same but so these two shelves are most of them plus these stacks over here that we haven't had listed but we have those shelves to fill up these shelves to fill up and this shelf to fill up so we got about a thousand books listed and we have room for probably another thousand or two thousand we need a lot more shelves but this is what we're doing for now so let me grab these books 514 514 jody Picolt, small great things that's one of of them set that thing down the next one 543 543 whoops i grabbed 544 543 afraid to love why am i afraid to love so now i gotta put this one back because accidental pull 543 now 558 it's gonna be on the same row it's gonna be right here dk smithsonian universe Let's go wrap these books. Gotta stay busy, gotta stay busy. So for most of our books, especially the lightweight ones like this, we're just gonna put them in a poly mailer with no padding or protection at all. Poly mailers cost about seven cents, so they're very economical compared to bubble mailers, which are gonna cost you about a quarter, even if you order a large bulk supply. Something like this is borderline. We might just throw this in a poly mailer or I might put a little bit of bubble wrap around it to help protect it, right? The heavier the book is, the more likely it is to damage itself from its own weight and getting thrown around during delivery to the customer. But there's no question that something like this, a heavy hardback book or a textbook that weighs three, four, five pounds is going to get severely damaged if you just put this in a poly mailer. So a bubble mailer would be optimal. I do have some bubble mailers I could recycle from previous merchant returns and from some of our consignment stuff. I might use one of those or I might use a roll of bubble wrap. I have these big rolls. Check it out. You can get these for from Office Depot locally or Office Max, 28 bucks for two 200 foot rolls. So 400 feet of bubble wrap perforated in 12 inch sections for 28 bucks plus tax comes out to about seven cents for every foot. For the sake of time, you should have some larger bubble mailers on hand just for these. But I also like having bubble wrap because I have large poly bags and that just presents me with more options. You can also use brown packing paper to wrap around these and then put it in there. But the goal is to protect it. So you don't want to wrap it super tightly you want to leave some air in there to keep the book from getting damaged air is what's going to protect it right so don't wrap it super tight like a book cover wrap it loose leave some crinkles in there that's what's going to protect it enough talking let's get to wrapping hey yo i got merchant fulfilled orders it's time for me to send them across borders coming through y'all know i feel like a hoarder when i start to ship it my flow is so exquisite wait sorry not that kind of wrapping this packaging wrapping not that kind Sorry. Are you here to pick up two pallet? For Reezy. Reezy. Yep, that's me. I got one pallet. It's supposed to be two, boss. The bill of lading says two pallet. Okay. They, they sent me that. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. All right. Can you park over here near the basin? Right here, I'll show you. All right, so now it's time to hop back on the forklift and load these puppies into the truck.
Awesome. Thank you, boss. Have a good day. Stay safe. All right. Pickup is completely done for sell back your book. Got my copy of the bill of lading. He got his copy. I'm going to file this away in the office and then I'm going to finish wrapping up these merchant fulfilled books like I told you I would because I'm not a liar. I'm just not. This is the first book I'm going to wrap and I'm going to wrap it with brown craft packing paper. It's very cheap. And then I'm going to throw it into this super large poly mailer that I have. Yeah, I realize it's an eBay poly mailer. That could be kind of confusing. I don't care. We're going to get it to the customer in good condition. So let's wrap this thing up. Normally for a heavy book, I would throw it in a flat rate priority padded mailer. That's going to give us very fast shipping time and it's going to cost $7.70 or 75 cents, something like that. But this just doesn't fit, which is why I'm going to do the brown packing paper and the poly mailer. And we're still going to save a little bit because media mail is going to be a lot cheaper than priority mail. So I knew you guys were going to mention that. It doesn't fit. It just doesn't. So back to this. See, nice amount of air in there. Gonna keep it nice and safe. And we're gonna throw it into the eBay poly mailer. Get it in there nice and tight. Now I'm gonna take this just for a little bit of extra protection. Now it's time to wrap this super lightweight book, which is not gonna need any packing. We're just gonna throw this thing into the poly mailer, slide it down, flip it over, peel it, stick it, write the name, afraid, or just one of the words in the title and then weigh it. Now this one is gonna go first class, so we're gonna be able to change the unit on the scale to ounces, and it's 5.9 ounces, so it's gonna be six ounces. So that's gonna be six ounces. Last item that we're mailing today is the Jody Picolt book. We're gonna get another piece of brown paper for this one. Nice and sloppy to keep a lot of air in there to protect it on its travels. And then I'm gonna hopefully throw this thing in here, peel it and then we're gonna seal it. And I'm gonna just take the slack out. I just don't like having slack on packages because the postal workers will grab it by the slack and just chuck it across who knows how many distances, like a discus toss. So there we go. This one's ready to be weighed. Put it on the scale. Let's see if it meets ounces. No, it's 16.7 ounces, which means this sucker is just over one pound. Could have got this at one pound. That's just how the cookie crumbles. It's 1.04 pounds. So that means it's two. You always got to round up with postage. Now we're going to go into Amazon and we are going to print postage for these items. So let me pull these items up. So we're going to go for the small great things Jody book. We're going to click buy shipping and it's going to load down here and we're gonna put in the weight. So we're gonna put two pounds and it's gonna present us with some shipping options. USPS media mail, $3.33. So we're gonna click buy shipping and then the label's gonna come out here. Then we're gonna put the label on the package. Once the label's on the package, it's ready to go to the post office and be dropped off or picked up by your mail carrier. I have this book, which is only six ounces. This is the Why Am I Afraid to Love? So let's go to buy shipping, scroll down to the bottom. We're gonna put six ounces and it's gonna give us first class mail or media mail. First class would be 331, bound printed matter 292, and USPS media mail 280. Obviously, we're gonna choose the cheapest one. We're not making a lot of money on these books. This is bulk business here. Margins are slim, guys. Got our shipping label, package, ready to go. Now for the big boy, we're gonna click buy shipping. We're gonna go down to the bottom. We're gonna input four pounds media mail and we're gonna wait to see the options that it gives us. Now, this one is giving us a USPS priority mail flat rate envelope. This is what it wants us to send it. And if you click see all options, you can see it's not giving us any cheaper options. Media mail is not being shown, UPS ground. All of these things are very expensive. The reason it didn't show media mail for this item is because it's going to Oklahoma and and Amazon thinks that it's not gonna arrive in time for the customers, but Amazon's not always right. We're actually gonna ship this using media mail and I guarantee it will still arrive in plenty of time to the customer. Media mail is not as slow as it used to be. The post office has made great improvements in the last few years. So in order to do that, we have to purchase postage on a separate website, which is called Pirate Ship. Pirate Ship is free shipping platform. The postage isn't free, but the platform is free. So we're gonna copy the 
customer information. Then we're gonna go into Pirate Ship. We're gonna print a single shipping label. We're gonna paste that information in there. And when we get the shipping label, we're gonna copy the delivery confirmation. And then we're gonna come back to Amazon and print that in there. So let me get the customer information into Pirate Ship and I'll show you guys how that works. Let's do this. The first thing we're gonna do is copy the customer's information. Obviously you can't see it, it's blurred out right now. We're gonna go create a single label on Pirate Ship. Then we're gonna go to ship to paste address. We're gonna paste the whole address into here. We're gonna look at it. We're gonna make sure everything is right as far as how it gets displayed. It doesn't always do a great job at parsing it. We're gonna make sure everything's good here. Then we're gonna go down to the bottom and do the packaging and we're just gonna estimate this. We're gonna say it's 10 inches on one side, 12 inches on the other and two inches thick. And package weight, remember, was four pounds media mail. We're gonna go down the bottom, check this box that says qualifies for media mail. Then go over here and get rates. Remember, Amazon wanted us to pay $7.25 for priority mail. Now, as you can see, we're actually gonna be able to ship it for $4.39 using media mail, which says two to eight days. And I guarantee Oklahoma is not that far from California. It's gonna be about two, maybe three days. So we save $3 and some change here. We're gonna buy the label. Then we're gonna come over here and press this button to copy to clipboard the tracking number. Then we're gonna print it. This dialogue is gonna come up, click print, grab your printer, and then print out the label. Now, we're gonna go back to Amazon and we're gonna click confirm shipment. Then we're gonna come over here and we are going to paste the tracking number and then click confirm shipment. Simple as that, that's how you save three bucks on a shipping order. Now, if this order was going to New York, I would have shipped it in a priority mailer if it would have fit. This thing doesn't even fit, so Amazon doesn't know what they're talking about saying that I should put this in a priority mailer. It doesn't fit, it just doesn't fit. So if it fits and it was all the way across the country, I would have done priority, but it's only a few states over to the Midwest. So we're gonna do media mail and we'll be just fine. We've never had any issues. Take the label put it on the package. So that's how we get these three merchant fulfilled orders ready to go to the customers. These items are now ready to go to the post office. And so I'm gonna load them into my car with the other package that I have in there. If you guys like this video, you would totally love the video that I did that shows a whole day of me shipping out merchant fulfilled orders and dropping off boxes at UPS. Click up here to check out that video. If you wanna sign up for sellbackyourbook.com, please use the link right here. This is my referral link. It's also down below in the description. I appreciate you guys. Like the video, comment down below if there's anything that I missed that you want me to cover. Subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, all that good stuff. And remember, if you ain't flipping, you slip. Flippin'. Peace. You'll get strangled to death as I mangle your flesh. Lights on, night con, which angle is best? I put you in the frame and let you hang with the rest. Call it photo finish as we diminish your last breath. And if the Sabbath is the day of the Lord, then my style of rap is like the way of the sword. Better sharpen your blade, I'm coming straight for your door. I see the devil in your face.